Learning how to breathe. Most people either overthink how to breathe during exercise or do it incorrectly because someone told them wrong. In order to understand how to breathe during exercise, it helps to understand what you're trying to accomplish by breathing a certain way. When lifting weights, coordinate your breathing to maintain a rigid midsection while the weight is in motion. That means holding your breath while the weight is moving. When handling a heavy load, you must keep your trunk stiff to protect your spine from injury by tensing up the so-called core muscles and holding your breath. This also improves efficiency of the movement by keeping everything else stable so that the muscles are able to work directly against the weight you are trying to move, instead of being dissipated by being wobbly. While the common advice is to exhale during the concentric part of the motion, such as while coming up from a squat, this is a misunderstanding based on the idea that holding your breath will raise your blood pressure to dangerously high levels. While it is true that holding your breath while moving a heavy weight transiently increases blood pressure, this increase is in response to the compressive forces pushing against the outside of the vessel wall. When a muscle contracts, it squeezes the blood vessel supplying it. Unless blood pressure increases enough to counteract it, the muscle won't receive enough blood flow. So the increase in blood pressure is necessary. What about the concerns about developing an aneurysm or having a stroke? As long as the pressure inside the vessel is equal to the pressure outside of the vessel, there's no disruption to the vessel wall. When you hold your breath, it increases the pressure inside your abdomen, which is then countered by a rise in blood pressure until it is equalized on both sides of the vessel wall. Similarly, inside of the skull, the increased cerebrospinal fluid pressure is counterbalanced by a rise in blood pressure in the vessels supplying your brain. While there is evidence of arterial thickening in those who spend years lifting heavy weights, it is not associated with increased morbidity. So let's teach you how to breathe while lifting weights. Let's take an example of a barbell squat. This is an exercise that involves placing a heavy weight on your back. So you need to produce as much intra-abdominal pressure as you can prior to moving the weight. Everything must remain rigid to prevent injury. You do this by breathing in and bracing your core. As a side note, the word core is often misused, but it is supposed to refer to all the muscles between your rib cage and your pelvis. If you're engaging all the muscles in your core, it will feel like the grunting and straining of being constipated. Don't exhale on the way up, as is commonly advised. Doing so makes you lose truncal rigidity, something that you absolutely do not want to do with a heavy load on your back. This very same principle carries over to every other exercise. On overhead pressing movements, breathe in, tense up, press, and exhale once the weight has returned to your shoulders, then repeat. On a deadlift, brace and breathe in before lifting, and exhale only once the weight has returned to the ground. Even on something like a pull-up, breathe in prior to starting the movement, and hold the breath until you are back at the bottom. Keep in mind that these are all natural breathing patterns. It is something you know how to do instinctively. So there is no need to be super dramatic about it. Just notice how it happens by itself already and pay attention to it. Remember that it is not only okay to hold your breath during an exercise, it is absolutely necessary. There are rare situations where holding your breath is contraindicated. This is something that you should consult your doctor about, especially if you have a known vascular abnormality or heart condition requiring special precautions. In these situations, you may not be able to work with heavy weights at all. While these situations are uncommon, check with your healthcare provider if you have concerns.